restart. Okay, essentially what we have here. So yeah, AF is handled by the sensor instead of by the actual mirror and another separate sensor as we see here. So that is the main differences between mirrors and DSLR cameras. And we'll go over a few, I didn't have a slide for this, but we'll go over what the uh, telephoto and wide angle lenses and the differences between those two and between, you know, a zoom lens. So as you can see here, this will be a zoom lens, right? You can zoom in and out of the focal lens versus a prime lens. Didn't prep them here, but I will generally talk over them. Okay. So next one up, we'll talk generally about uh, differences between full and crop sensors. Full frame sensors are usually what uh, originally have, originally what we have before the digital age is we have the film cameras in which we'll see uh, the later slide right here. A film camera usually shoots on 35 mil, right? So that translates to the digital age into a full frame sensor right here. As you can see down here, a full frame sensor is much larger than a crop sensor. And that's the main physical difference there. And what this physical difference does is cr it creates, you know, provides a fuller dynamic range. Oh. Because, well, as we can see here, there's a much larger surface area of a sensor. Therefore, light can hit onto it more, right? What dynamic range is, this, this is a technical term that we use in photography that describes generally um, the highest amount of information that you can retain from the widest pixels, right? And the, the highest amount of information you can retain from the blackest pixel. So this is it for say uh, on a sunny day out there, right? We're trying to expose for both the subjects and the background. If you're shooting with the sun, so having the sun in front of your actual camera and your subject in front of it, it's very hard and extremely hard to get a perfect exposure of the both of the background and the subject, right? This is because the background is going to be so much brighter than your subject. So if you want to retain information from the background, you generally need to, you know, kind of un uh, underexpose the foreground. Yeah. So this creates, you know, a very difficult uh, task to, you know, shoot under the sun, right? Because you're either going to get a very dark subject or very bright background. So this is dynamic range. If you have a full frame sensor, however, it will be a little bit better than you know a crop frame sensor however crop frame sensors are much much cheaper right your entry level cameras like this one d5000 well this kind of middle but uh like your d3000 series for nikon you know those are much cheaper than like for say a d700 for example and also we're going to talk about what crop sensor multiplier is and this isn't just an effect you know if you look at the image up here the green one represents a crop sensor and the red one represents the full frame sensor okay so in the image of a full frame sensor nothing's going to be cropped right everything's going to be presented as it is but on an aspc over here which is a type of crop sensor you can see that it's much more zoomed in. Therefore, you can use this to your advantage when shooting, you know, wildlife photography or portrait photography. When you want to have a uh, very blurry background, that's what we call a shallow depth of field. You know, it's because when you're zooming it in, the effect will be a shallow depth of field. Okay. If you guys have any questions, you can just uh, pop up and um, you know ask. And turn on your mic but essentially let's say we have a lens here right this is actually whatever we have over here it says that um it's like a 55 mil right 55 mil this value is actually for the full frame camera but not the crop frame camera because what we talked about here right the crop frame will be much more zoomed in than a full frame camera Therefore, there will be a crop factor. And for different 
camera, it will be different, right? So let's say, hypothetically, we have a 1.5 times crop factor. We can do a 1.5 times, uh, uh, times crop factor onto a 24 millimeter, which is a wide angle lens, right? Which is to 24 times 1.5, that gets you 36, okay? 36 over here. So, the equivalent focal length on a crop frame camera, if you have a 24 millimeter lens, is actually 36 millimeter. So you see why this could be an advantage, right, when used correctly. Because if you're shooting outside for wildlife photography, you need to have to short, you need to shorten the distance between you and the subject. If you're shooting on a crop frame camera with whatever lens you have, it automatically shortens that distance for you already, right? So that could be used as an advantage. Okay, do we have any questions so far? Okay, I'm just gonna move on. Alright, so next one up is the point and shoot. I have one of these as well. Uh, I actually used that as my um, film, like a filming camera before I got the uh, D3000. Uh, it is extremely compact. However, there's one disadvantage is that it, it has a fixed lens, right? You, you can't really switch out the lens as we can with the uh, DSLR and mirrors camera. However, they're extremely easy to carry around. They're like super lightweight. Like if I want to carry around this for documentation purposes, you know, I'm going to have a sore back or, okay, well, because those ones are very small. You can pretty much hold it with your hand, right? Some are waterproof like the, uh, this brand over here, the Olympus Top TG6 camera. They're waterproof and durable. So that's one of the pro of a point and shoot. And then of course we have smartphone cameras. So smartphones right now, nowadays, you know, it's pretty amazing how much stuff you could do, Winston, right? You can shoot amazing photos. It doesn't really matter what device you're using. As long as you have the right compositional technique, you have the right and proper understanding of light and how to work it, okay? A smartphone camera itself, it's very powerful nowadays. However, to unlock the full potential of manual controls, you will have to essentially use third-party softwares such as Filmic First Light and, uh, you know, photo editing software such as, you know, Snapseed or Lightroom Mobile. Essentially, uh, over here, it's an image of a uh, Filmic First Light. What your actual camera gives itself is that it doesn't give you full control of your aperture shutter speed ISO stuff like that even though it says like manual control it doesn't actually give you full the fullest control of it right and this one can give you the diagrams uh, as well so you can kind of read your information your your blackest pixels and whitest pixels and where they are right so third-party softwares allow you to take photography to the next level than you have if, if you have just like on generic phone like app right so lastly, we're going to go into film, okay? Film comes before digital. So this is like a very old-fashioned way of shooting stuff. And of course, there's a lot of artistic ability that you could generate from shooting on film. I do not shoot on film, but if you look at images, uh, I can search it up right now. If you just search up film pictures, a lot of it are extremely soft, right? Okay, no, that's not going to work. But if you look at the picture, it's very soft and nostalgic, right? Uh, what soft means is that it's not very sharp. So sharpness is the amount of contrast you have when it's like the black and the white, right? So it's kind of blurry, but it's not like actually blurry enough that you can't entail the information from there. So it creates a very old-fashioned way and kind of styles it. And it can translate to amount, uh, will this be, will this slide be available? Yeah, it will be. Yes. I'm just gonna answer. Oh, answer her. Anyways, the concept of ISO arises from film, okay? Because, you know, when we have the film stock, 
right? You have to choose what, which film stock to use for which condition of light, right? So, if let's say uh, it's a very dark day, right? So you need a higher ISO. You will need to choose a different film stock for that circumstance, basically. Practicing on film is pretty uh, tedious, but it's extremely fun. I wish I could get into it. I'll maybe get into it in, uh, <laughs> when I don't have school later on. But basically, those are the types of camera that we covered today. And I'll actually go over the uh, different type of lenses as well. And I'll show you my lenses, the lens selection that I have. So. As I've discussed before, we have a telephoto lens and the wide angle lens. So, telephoto lens uh, essentially, basically, is a pretty high focal lens, right? You're zooming in. So, if you want to shoot, you know, animals, right? You're not gonna grab a wide angle lens which kind of zooms out of image, right? That, that would be kind of ridiculous if you want to shoot wildlife animals because you will have to walk pretty close to it in order to capture it, right? So on this zoom lens, you can zoom into the subject. And by doing that, you're basically achieving, you know, a telephoto lens. On the other one, I have it right here. Just give me a second. So this lens right here is an actual telephoto lens, all right? And because it zooms into 300 millimeter of focal lens. So this lens right here, telephoto. What telephoto has is that a very beautiful bokeh, okay, so blurry background. So this creates separations between your subject and the background, okay. Similar, it works similarly to your eyes. So if you want to focus on a subject in front of you, let's say my finger, right. If you focus on this finger, everything behind you will be blurry. That's the point of a telephoto lens or, you know, to achieve soft or shadow depth of field, okay? When you're shooting landscape, however, you wouldn't really use telephoto lens, well, you could for artistic expressions, but generally, you will use a wide-angle lens because a wide-angle lens allows you to capture every detail in the entire image. For example, if you want to, you know, shoot uh, cityscape, landscape, mountains, people, not just one single person, but a group of people, you know, you would usually choose a wide angle lens, right? Because it allows you to retain all the information there. And wide angle lens is usually associated with, you know, uh, deep depth of field. That means that everything is pretty much in view. And we'll talk about depth of field, you know, aperture, ISO, shutter speed in the next lesson. But essentially, this is the difference between telephoto and wide angle lens and what we meant by it, okay? And that will be basically it for today. It's a pretty short lesson. It's just on the different type of cameras. Do we have any questions? If not, thank you guys so much for coming. And the next lesson will be in two weeks and we'll cover the basics of the uh, camera operations such as, you know, ISO, aperture, shutter speed, etc. Okay, thank you guys so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Yep.